So what are these usable KPIs? Well, imagine you're sitting in a, uh, an organization. It's usually split between three or more departments. In this example, I will have three of the departments. Now, when it comes to PR, the need is really to have a reason to speak. First off, you know, most products don't change. Uh, so we come up with campaigns and, you know, a lot of stuff uh, just to like keep ourselves interesting. Now, that might give us a reason to speak, but it rarely gives us a reason to speak about the core stuff in, in our product. Now, so the need for a PR department is always to have a reason to speak. The goal, on the other hand, is to get influence. And the way to look at it, this from a KPI perspective is to have a look at vanity metrics. Vanity metrics, you know, what they signal and vanity metrics are everything that doesn't really mean anything for your business. Uh, but what they are are essentially a group of, of numbers that help you say that you are important, that you are someone, such as hits to a website or visitors or um, views on a YouTube movie or whatever it might be, you know. They are not important to the business results uh, as they do not matter to your business results. Uh, I mean, if you get a million of crappy traffic to your website, they will not buy anything or do anything that you want them to do. And they are not important to your business. And so the, the mere number of visitors is not important to, towards your goals. It doesn't show you a movement towards your goal. However, what they do is they give you a reason to talk to other people. So they actually give you a reason to speak, just as a million views on YouTube does. I mean, if you call a journalist, for example, and you've just launched a new campaign and you say, hey, journalist, I've just launched a new campaign, then seriously, most journalists that are serious, they will tell you to, 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 to get out, you know, they, they're not interested in, in your new campaign. However, if you, on the other hand, call them and say that, I just received 1 million views on YouTube in two days. Then they will be more likely to listen on to, to the rest of your story as you attach that, yes, we released this new campaign and blah, 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 blah. So vanity metrics are not good, uh, you know, indicator as to whether or not your, your business is doing great, but they are really good at, at uh, 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 helping people, convincing people that you are popular. Same thing goes with, with you know, influentials in, in social channels or influencer, uh, influen <laughs> influentials, um, people who are, you know, big Instagrammers or bloggers and things like that. If you manage to show them that you can give them vanity metrics, such as followers, traffic and things like that, if they hang out with you, then you are sure to have an asset that will give you and will give them a reason to listen to you and will give you a reason to talk to them. So that's the first bit. It's vanity metrics. Those are very usable KPIs when you're out there working. When it comes to marketing, on the other hand, the need is not a reason to speak, but it's reach. Because if you don't reach anyone with your marketing message, uh, what happens is that they, you know, at the end of the day, your your work won't have mattered. It doesn't really matter if you, 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 uh, whatever you're saying, if no one is reached by it, you will not affect uh, your business. Now, the goal, on the other hand, is attention. You want to see that people have picked up the right thing from your marketing and then are using it in some way, shape or form that you've sort of you know, anticipated them to do. Now, the how to do this is to actually have a look at engagement rate, because as it is right now, uh, as all these uh, you know big platforms they are governed by these algorithms all these algorithms they look at engagement rates uh, as a sign of popularity and so in order to signal to an algorithm that you are popular you need people to engage with the content that you're pushing out there and so engagement rates are not so important as to you know looking at whether or not facebook will bring back a positive roi or nothing uh, but what it is is that uh, it signals to the Facebook algorithm in terms of, you know, comments and likes and shares. Uh, it signals to the Google algorithm in terms of, you know, likes and, and mentions and such things, references. Um, 
uh, and and uh, it signals to all these kind of different algorithms online that if you have engagement in different languages or different currencies, as in likes, links, shares, you know, that those are different currencies in my mind. So uh, if you got a lot of that, your content will be valued more than content of the same type that has less engagement. So uh, if they are to choose between two types of, of content that are fairly similar to show to a user in a feed, they will always uh, show the content that uh, seems to be more popular to that specific individual uh, than the other type of co uh, content. So it will help you, it will save you money and it will give you, you know, a push for your organic reach, meaning you will look more sincere that you didn't have to sponsor your shit to get it in my eye, uh, um, to get it in my feed or in my search result. So engagement rates are really, really important in terms of, of, of marketing and getting reach out there. Then in terms of sales, we're really into high value because we, if we have high value, that's really what we need. If we have high value, then our conversion rates will go up uh, significantly at any price point that we introduce to the market. So let's say we have two similar products. One is perceived to be of higher value than the other one. If they are at the same price point, the one with a higher value will sell, sell more. This value might be a social value, it might be a monetary value, it might be a emotional value, but it is a higher perceived value. If they're at the same price point, you will sell more of the one that has the higher value. Now, naturally, this is logic. Um, however, there are ways in which we can infuse uh, you know, higher value into to, to the equation and, and, uh, and, and, and bring up conversions, conversion rates by doing that. And so what we have a look at there is reputation. And so if you have a good reputation, or if you have any reputation actually, uh, except for some specific industries, if you just have a rep reputation, the actual size of your reputation is more important than uh, whether or not this reputation is good or bad. So if you have a big reputation, meaning like uh, a lot of mentions, a lot of people know about you, they reference you, it's actually better than to have no rep uh, reputation at all. Now, to give you an example of how this works together, because as we've been working with, with uh, a lot of these metrics that do not really make sense in terms of business goals, because reputation is really difficult to, to measure its effect on, on the business goals, we know that, that reputation, engagement rate and vanity metrics, they work together. And so in order to get that reach, in order to always have a reason to speak and in order to have a perceived high value, we know that we need to work with our rep reputation, engagement and vanity metrics uh, along the way. And as it seems, they sort of have an intricate relationship with each other. Now, let me just take um, Red Bull as an example. Whenever Red Bull announces that they're about to release a new campaign, we know that they've got the kind of stuff that is exciting, it's thrilling, it's, you know, that's the kind of content that we would anyhow you know, watch or, or consume. And so we build up anticipation because they have the reputation that they release good things. Now, think about it. I mean, they've been, they, they've been spending years on building this reputation. Now, as they introduce their new thing to the market, our first thought is that this is really good, uh, regardless of, of, of what it is. Most people who watch it, who know about Red Bull's stuff and that it's usually cool and talked about, they will bring that with them in when they watch it. So the baseline engagement rate would actually be higher uh, because people will feel that it's safe to engage with Red Bull content because they are usually popular. And so as they start engaging, uh, the actual process is that this content becomes popular as a result, which brings up the vanity metrics. And the vanity metrics gives you a reason to speak to, let's say, the press. So uh, the storyline can go something like this, you know, oh, they are, you know, doing this soon at, at Red Bull. They are re releasing their new, uh, you know, man of the moon video or doesn't even have to be something specific like that 
that will bring up engagement rate because people are talking about it, they're building up anticipation and then everyone wants to be the first to share this and that will bring up the vanity metrics giving Red Bull a reason to go to the press and say like or to big uh, influencers and uh, uh, say like yeah you know this uh, campaign that we just released you know it's it's really really uh, uh, popping off you know it's really popular da, 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 da. and then they get to communicate all of these other values that they want to communicate but that is red bull i mean on a day-to-day -day basis uh, we've found that this actually works as well uh, because if you start getting reputation meaning if you start engaging with people outside of your website let's say so in forums or review websites on on uh, all these different places we see that you actually build a network that enables you to launch stuff without having to pay for it so for example if you go on reddit and you start working on a subreddit you get a lot of people in that place and and you work with them you engage with them what happens is that when you post that link to your your commercial content that you want to get get a lot of views on or you got to want to get a lot of eyeballs on what happens is that you have a launching platform for that same thing and so it's really important that you get in there and you start by building a reputation of being a person that is you know a cool uh, cat to hang out with or someone who's really knowledgeable or you know something that kind of reputation that you want to build if it's trust or whatever so that when you are going to uh, release something that you know you got to have a reputation that you put it out there so that everyone think that it's either popular safe or whatever that their reasoning is behind it whatever your reputation that you've been building on it so that it's you know safe or or cool or whatever uh, to share this stuff because if they think that if they attach that reputation to your content what happens is that they will find it much easier to start sharing that stuff and so you decrease the actual friction from, you know, seeing a content, having to think about it and uh, to actually sharing. Maybe you just need a cool title now to get people to start sharing this. This will bring up the initial vanity metrics and they are super important, meaning, you know, views on a YouTube clip, hits to a website. Maybe you even do one of those fake, oh no, we got so much traffic that our website went down. Whatever it is that you did uh, at this point in time, uh, you need that reputation in order to kick off the engagement in order to get those vanity metrics fast because it's the pace of those vanity metrics that actually gives you a reason to start contacting journalists uh, and uh, influencers that, that are important to you in order to get that big boom. Uh, because if you let's say have a, some content on, on YouTube you will only get 20% of whatever uh, view count uh, you're looking for if you're only on YouTube. 80% of all views happen or more than 80% of all views actually happen outside of the YouTube platform. So what you have to do is you have to contact people, get in touch with people, move your content outside of that platform in order to actually get the results going for you. So I just wanted to bring this up for usable KPIs because they are essential in terms of understanding how to later then work with reputation engagement rates and vanity metrics and they if you understand how to work with this you will find it much easier to actually uh, release new things into this territory or or release things through these kind of vir viral mechanics or viral tactics that we're going to go through right so that's for usable kpis